Hey guys, it's a Marsh guy here and welcome once again to my channel. First of all, I want to say thank you to all the people who messaged me and said how my videos inspired them in many ways. I hope to keep on inspiring you guys with my videos and I also hope that you keep on supporting this humble channel. Now let's get to the meat of this video. After I made the videos on the 7 habits that changed my life, which I will leave in the description box below, a classmate messaged me and asked me, Aris, where do you get your motivation to do your habits? It actually took me a long time to reply because it was such a deep and self-reflective question. A question which I actually hear a lot from people of my age. So I did some self-reflecting and I figured out that I actually don't require any motivation to keep performing those habits on a daily basis. It was more of an inner self-discipline and a sprinkle of motivation if I may say. After my classmate and I had a brief conversation, I arrived at the realization that I too was like my classmate. I used to blame my lack of motivation for not being able to study on some days. I blame myself for not doing things which if I would have done would have saved me from the horrors of procrastination. And a lot of times I wasted the hours of the day on many non-essential things simply because motivation was nowhere to be found. In this video, I will be talking about motivation and self-discipline and how you can use the both of them so you can be the productive person that you aspire to be. I think we can all agree that motivation is such a terrific thing when it comes. It's like the fuel that powers up your engine and just keeps you going until you run out of it. And that's the problem. Motivation is inconsistent and it comes and goes each time. So what happens if you don't have motivation? We slump, we feel lazy, and even procrastinate with deadlines. It's wonderful when it's there, but when it's gone, it can drain the life out of you if you let it. The main problem that we face here is where to look for motivation because more often than not, we spend more time looking for it than actually doing the task on hand. I charge myself guilty for that as well. Two weeks after online classes started, I already ran out of willpower to keep on going. It was very exhausting. It was after a day of doing nothing that I stumbled upon productivity articles that motivated me to get out of my bed and stop looking for signs to do my assignments. It was then that I learned about self-discipline and why having it is bound to make you even more successful in life. Self-discipline teaches us to get things done even when we're not in the mood to do anything at that point in time. It allows us to accomplish things because we already wire our brain into thinking that these things have to be done or else consequences may arise. For most of us, the thought of doing this might sound stressful already, especially when we have relied on motivation for our creativity or productivity. Some people like to think about their college tuition and the thought of it immediately pulls them out of their bed. Some people make motivation boards so they have something to wake up to in the morning and some people have loved ones to motivate them. But personally, I make it a habit to cultivate my self-discipline towards achieving the goals that I want for the day and for the week. I watched a Skillshare video by Thomas Frank and one of the things he said caught my attention. He said that if you can make decisions that are fueled by self-discipline and conscious thought and acceptance of what to do, you can make them habitual and automatic and it could take a whole lot less of discipline and willpower. This demonstrates the power that self-discipline holds for people who want to achieve their goals with or without the presence of motivation. Now I'm not saying that we should reject motivation when it arrives, but once you have self-discipline laid out as your foundation, you can have motivation as your pedestal towards even greater productivity and success. In that way, you wouldn't have to go back to zero when you lose motivation because you already have cultivated your sense of self-discipline, which allows you to keep pushing forward. It's attempting to keep building your productivity by taking advantage of the moments when motivation comes rushing down your soul. One of the best ways to start having self-discipline is by creating and thinking about your goals for a year or for a month and breaking down those goals into smaller goals which you can do every day. If you still don't know what your goals are, I suggest that you start by listing down all your goals for a year or for a month on a piece of paper and try to highlight or encircle the top three or four most important goals for you. The key point here is so that you have to focus on the things that are essential for you in the long run so you don't get distracted by the other goals that you've written down. After you've done this, try to do something every day, perhaps a daily habit that you can practice towards achieving your goal. The idea is having small goals that in effect create big changes if done consistently. For example, I want to be fluent in Spanish someday, so I take at least 15 minutes of the day to study the language. And when the time's up, I see if I still want to learn more. 
Regardless, I was able to pull up the habit of studying chunks of the language each day. To motivate me, I use a habit tracker which tracks my progress each day and reminds me to do my daily habits no matter how big or small they are. This allows me to see an overview of how long I've been doing certain habits and reminds me of the streak that I have with this habit. I also built my own personal external system which encourages self-discipline. Self-discipline and external systems are best buddies. Basically, an external system is your to-do lists and schedules. The primary purpose of an external system is to be a conduit between your thoughts and your tasks. There are many instances when we think so much about what we have to do that we just tend to shut down and forget about the overwhelming amount of tasks that we have to do. Our external systems release that burden from us if we jot down all the tasks that we have to do and sort out the things that are important and non-important. You can simply use your notebook as a to-do list and planner or you can also look for an app that makes it easy for you to log in all the tasks that you have to do. By the way, remember to make your schedule as flexible as possible so you can allot some leeway for unforeseen circumstances and make time for them in your schedule without having to compromise your plan for the day. Another key factor here is dealing with your environment since your environment plays a big role in your productivity and motivational process. The environment can be a bridge to your productivity so I tailor my environment in a way that reminds me of the things that I have to do for the day. For example, before going to sleep, I place my book and calculator at the top of my desk so tomorrow, I am reminded that I need to study. For example, before going to sleep, I place my book and calculator at the top of my desk so tomorrow, I am reminded that I need to study. But if I were to just hide my book in a drawer, then I'd easily forget about studying or worse, I might not be motivated to do anything related to studying for the day. On top of your daily plan, these simple things remind and motivate us to do the things that we should be doing, strengthened by the fact that we already prepared for them the day before. Another YouTuber, The Bliss Bean, also recommends experimenting with your motivation. That is, number one, observe what you lack motivation, and number two, find a different way to the same end goal and try to be creative and find the ways that make you feel happy or motivated when doing the task. By this time, you would know that motivation is uniquely tailor-made for different people and you just have to find out what works for you. For example, in studying, generally I abhor studying, but my self-discipline reminds me that I have to study or else I won't be able to retain myself in the program which is my goal. Though the goal motivates me, I found another way to make me look forward to studying more. I downloaded the forest app which allows you to grow trees and build the forest using the time you use for studying as its game currency. If I try to use my phone during that time that I should be studying, a virtual tree can die. This method inhibits the usage of my phone while I study. So basically, you earn coins by studying or doing deep focus work. And what's great is that you can use your coins to purchase a real life tree. And if this doesn't work, sometimes my friends and I would do live video call Pomodoros where we would study and monitor each other for 25 minutes and talk to each other during study breaks. This for me creates an atmosphere of positive pressure and motivation that pushes us to study with focus. Now, if ever you do stop practicing habits you once had or just simply forget to do those things because you had other priorities coming to light, do not worry and don't be too hard on yourself. Acknowledge your lapses, try to reevaluate your methods, and try to think about where you went wrong. Remember, when you feel like quitting, remind yourself that a thought itself does not limit your choices and it does not force you to quit. This is what Thomas Frank likes to call as embracing the suck. Learn to forgive yourself and do not allow yourself to completely derail from the track that you're going through. Forgive yourself, start over and keep making progress. You don't have to compare yourself to anyone because you only have to focus on yourself and your self-development. And remember, along with habit formation and self-discipline comes a reward system. Never forget to reward yourself for accomplishing the tasks you did for the day and for not missing out any important stuff for the week. Personally, my reward system is Netflix and a longer amount of sleep during Sundays. I do these to remind myself that I've done great and productive work throughout the week and I'm on the right track towards achieving my goals. Just don't forget to work out a habit, start small, and nurture your motivation as you go. That's it for the Marsh Guide today and I hope that you were able to pick up some nuggets that you can use in your own life. See you on the next video.